Neil, science and religion seem like they have a parallelism as we're talking, but, but they're really asymmetric. So how should religion talk to science? First of all, I think that religious-minded people, they should simply acknowledge that it is the scientists who know how, how things are, uh, how the nature works, where we came from, and, and the mechanisms that have driven us towards our present-day situation in broad uh, terms. I also think that, that uh, theologians and other religious-minded people should try to think about how the science uh, uh, how the scientific findings can be put in a bigger framework. How, uh, in a sense, what the sciences teaches us, how this can combine with what we think is also true, but which might not be accessible by, by scientific means. So the fact that you and I are sitting here and having a meaningful conversation, we don't need to have a brain scientist to tell us that. <laughs> well, I, I won't take that personally. <laughs> <laughs> so is religion enriched by incorporating the ideas of science? I think that this is, in a sense, what has happened over the last three, four hundred years. First of all, we had this understanding that the universe is much bigger than we thought it was 300 years ago. And, it's, and we still are actually surprised. I think that what is surprising to, 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 to scientists are also surprising to many religiously minded people. And I think it should be so. I also would like to mention the evolutionary theory. I think that a lot has been, has been learned from evolutionary theory by, by theologians, so that we in a sense have a new theology after Darwin that we didn't have, uh, say, uh, 200 years ago. Some would say that has diminished religion. That, uh, I think it has clarified the role of, of, re of religion. The problem was that in earlier times we had a religion which claimed to be able to explain everything. In a sense, today it's only physicists who make such high <laughs> claims, uh, but they also know that they can only make these high claims on, at a very general level. Mm -hmm. But early on we had very thick Expl explanatory models uh, provided by theologians so that you, if you can explain why the earthquake in Lisbon happened, this was because that the Catholic were, Catholics were unfaithful and <laughs> so on. All this we don't have anymore. So I think actually that religion has made uh, uh, progress by absorbing central ideas from contemporary sciences, both from physics concerning the, the vastness and, uh, and, 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 and surprising aspects of, our, of, of the physical cosmos and also from uh, biology, evolutionary biology, from Darwinism. So doesn't it seem that as science expands, religion retreats? No, I don't think it, this is uh, how it works. It's, like, it's more like a balloon. We have then a balloon of knowledge, which is, is actually expanding. Now my point is not that it will break, but the point is that as soon as, we, as the balloon is increasing in size, then also the areas of that which we do not yet know, which is actually, uh, which is actually something that calls for our further quest, is also increasing. And I think this can be shown on, 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 on many, uh, uh, in, in many cases, say quantum mechanics. Gives, has given us a new understanding of what basic reality is. Mm -hmm. But well, it has created a lot of new puzzles concerning the small world. Similarly, with the big world, the Big Bang uh, cosmology that we have now is, uh, is, is now considered to be a rather safe history. But we really don't know what was bef before that at, or what uh, or what the factors were that, that uh, was the background conditions for this particular universe. And then take again the, the complexity sciences, which work with, with things in the medium-sized world, like you and I talking here, and the development of language, the development of neurons. I think that the more we know about this, the more 
it actually gives us a reason to be surprised and in a sense also to to praise if i may say so uh, the 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 universe as it is both in its grandeur and in, in its tiny uh, uh, mysterious uh, character mm. and all that life the complex reality that we, in which we live and breathe so as a theologian speaking personally has your life been enriched by your knowledge of science i think this has this has been my personal experience and um, i also think that there could be disclaimers of religion coming from from science and i think it's very important to have a religious mindset that allows yourself to be falsified so this is a real danger for religion i think it it is it should be a danger <laughs> for uh, uh, for religion actually because otherwise you don't say anything about the universe so as soon as you say anything about yourself or about the universe then you also have the the in principle possibility of being refuted What's an example? How could how could give me a scientific fact of the future that could refute a core religious tenet? Let me begin from with some example from the past. If you have a physical theory that says that everything in nature is determined from the uh, from the boundary conditions and 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 from the initial conditions, mm. then you, you would not have freedom, and many other things that you speak about in religious life would not be be uh, spoken about in that way at least. But Wait a minute. That falsification is false. It, it is not the case that determinism is correct. So that falsification of religion didn't work. So are you saying that any kind of apparent falsification of religion will turn out itself to be false? In other words, religion almost certainly will survive any scientific fact. That is true. That is the point. That is actually the point. I think that we live in a very religiously hospitable universe uh, uh, for the time being. I think there are no actually uh, falsifiers. But you could think about something about the far future of the universe. If we now have this situation that life can only go on for say one or five a million years, we don't know, or even much lesser, sure, yeah. sure. and everything would stop with that. I think that would be a refutation of the expectations expressed by by Jews, uh, 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 Muslims, Christians, and Hindus that there's uh, that there's also some some new world to come. If I put myself in the shoes of a theologian, I would say that there is no physical fact of the universe that can refute what I believe to be some spiritual essence of 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 all reality. So nothing in the physical world could ever refute, as a matter of principle, mm. that which I believe. Mm. Because the physical and the spiritual, they actually are combined. If we had two different worlds, one physical running down here, mm. and then another spiritual mm. floating up here, mm. then it would not be a problem. But for me, actually, then God is involved with the whole of reality, including the physical reality. Mm.